All right, I thought I'd uh, take a moment and do a little video on this particular radio. This one here is a Yaesu uh, FT227RA memorizer. It is a 2 meter transceiver. It uh, covers the standard 144 to 148 megahertz. It has selectable RF output of 1 or 10 watts. It has four memory channels, selectable repeater offsets. It has an opto rotary encoder for frequency selection. And uh, it has selectable scanning functions where it'll scan for a busy frequency or a clear one, or you can stop it manually. It also has a 5 kilohertz offset and tone squelch. These radios were made in the late 70s. They were pretty popular. And actually, uh, this radio here was kind of my uh, entry into ham radio. Uh, individual I knew way back in the late 70s from my dad was a ham and he brought one over to show it to me and since uh, back then I was really into CB and had always been into electronics so he brought one of these over and left it for a couple of days for me to listen to and uh, I liked it so much they begged my dad to get me one of these things but he just quite didn't have the money because these things were nearly 300 bucks back in the 70s late 70s it's a lot of money so i figured i'd dig this thing out hook it up and uh run it through its paces right now it's just scanning so we can stop the scanning by pressing the, one of the buttons on the mic you can go up and down you can use the uh knob up front here and do the same thing it has uh four memory channels you access the memories by turning on the memory button and you can just select between the memories from there. Uh, if you got a repeater you want to get into, well, you can install the tone board. There's one installed to this. It's an aftermarket. And I've used it on the local machine a few times. Uh, the 5 kilohertz up button. And you use this button here to store memories. You can simply just go to a memory channel. Dial a frequency that you want. Let's go to... 46 megahertz press the memory button and now it's there uh, memory number four on the other hand can be used as a offset so whatever frequency you program into the radio on memory number four can be used as an offset but uh, it's a little tricky to do it and uh, you know so you got to be careful but anyway, I wanted to run it through its paces, check the deviation, the power output's fine, so I was going to use my one of my bird meters, but the slug that I have for the 2-meter band has somehow developed a problem, so I won't be doing that. But we'll take a look at on a older spectrum analyzer and uh, see how she does. Alrighty, well, we'll use the... Uh the good old uh, 853A for this test. I have the radio set to 147 megahertz. Uh, the spectrum analyzer is about there, so take a look and yeah, it's looking pretty good. No, uh, no bizarre looking spurs. Uh, we'll bump up the frequency or the uh, megahertz per division. I don't see anything weird, so that's looking pretty good. All right, well, let's drop down in resolution here. Let's go down to... Let's go down to 10 kilohertz per division. And let's see how much deviation we got here. Hello, test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, that's looking pretty good. There's an easy uh, 5 kilohertz per division, 5 uh, kilohertz deviation there, so we're looking good there. Maybe a little hot, but uh, hey, it's the way it works. All right, the next thing I did was a uh, frequency stability test using my trusty uh, HP 5371A. And it doesn't look like it did too bad. It, uh, let's see here, turn the delta on. Uh, go back to the main menu, turn our marker. Turn our marker's on. 
Radio didn't drift that far. It started at uh, 147.00024 megahertz and drifted upwards over the course of two minutes. Uh, we're getting pretty close to 30 hertz, so I guess that would be pretty freaking good, I think. <laughs> but, uh, leveled off. It may have. I may have run this test a little longer, but uh, it certainly. Uh, I've tested this radio before, and, it's, and, it's, and this is a pretty much a uh, repeatable curve here. But yeah, that's uh, kind of interesting. So at least we know it's stable and on frequency to speak to speak of. All right, now my signal generator set for five microvolts to four full scale on the meter. But if we go down to Say, uh, yeah, it's 100 microvolt, or uh, actually, let's go down to uh, 0.2. Whoops, wrong one. Go to amplitude, and we go to uh, 0.5 microvolts. Receiver's still hearing it, but we're down around an S or. Yeah, I guess you can call it S1 on the meter. It's not really an S unit. And we can go down even further. Let's go down to a quarter of a microvolt. Still, you can hear it. That is pretty sensitive. So let's uh, go down a little bit more. Yeah, getting way down there now. I would say that's probably pretty much it. A tenth of a microvolt. That's, I would say that's pretty good. <laughs> After all these years, this thing is still super sensitive. And I find that uh, pretty amazing. So let's go back to a quarter microvolt. And then let's go up to, uh, let's say, 0.3 microvolts. Still there. But anyhow, yeah, that's a good old radio. I, uh, if I guess I wanted to, I could put it in one of my vehicles and still use it today, even though I'd be a little limited on what uh, what machines I can use it on. Anyway, I just wanted to just throw this out there, so if you like it, hey, no problem. But, uh, if you ever find one of these, you know, it might be uh, you know worth to pick one up and just see how she works. Catch y'all later.